Let me just thank the people of Indiana uh, for giving us a great upset victory tonight. I know all the pundits thought we were supposed to lose, but that apparently was not what the people of Indiana uh, concluded. Um, I understand that Secretary Clinton thinks that this campaign is over. I've got some bad news for her. Uh, yeah! uh, tonight we won a great victory in Indiana. Uh, next week we're going to be in West Virginia. We think we have a real shot uh, to win in that great state. Then we're going to Kentucky and we're going to Oregon. We think we have a pretty good chance to win there as well. And then we're going to another bunch of other states, uh, culminating in the largest state uh, in the United States with the most delegates, and that is the state of California. And we think we have a pretty good chance to win there. And I think that as more and more delegates uh, to the Democratic Convention take a hard look uh, at which candidate is generating the kind of enthusiasm, excitement, voter turnout that we need to make sure that somebody like a Donald Trump does not become president. I think you can see more and more delegates concluding that that candidate uh, is Bernie Sanders. And the reason for that is that the issues that we are talking about in this campaign are the issues that are on the hearts and minds of the American people. The American people are tired of working longer hours for low wages, and seeing almost all new income and wealth going to the top 1%. They are tired of super PACs and a corrupt campaign finance system that allows billionaires to buy elections. They're tired of a broken criminal justice system, which enables us to have more people in jail than any other country on earth. They are worried about the future for their children. And they understand that unless we create an economy that works for all of us and not just the 1%. Their kids are gonna have a lower standard of living than they do, and we're gonna see the end of the American dream, and we are not going to allow that to happen. And the American people understand that in this great country, we can do what every other major industrialized country on earth is doing, and that is guaranteeing healthcare to all people as a right, and to guarantee paid family and medical leave and by the way, to demand, when we have so much income and wealth inequality, that Donald Trump and the billionaire class start paying their fair share of taxes. So we feel great about tonight, not only in winning here in Indiana, in accumulating some more delegates, but also gaining the momentum we need to take us to the finish line. Uh, and we are, you know, we started this campaign uh, way, way, way behind. Uh, nobody, I think, would have dreamed uh, that here at this particular point uh, in May of 2016, not only would we be here, but we would be winning elections, but we are. So I, I sense a great deal of momentum. I, I sense some great uh, victories coming. And I think that while the path is narrow, and I do not deny that for a moment, uh, I think we can pull off one of the great political upsets in the history of the United States and in fact become the nominee uh, for the uh, Democratic Party. And then once we secure that position, I have absolute confidence that we are gonna defeat Donald Trump uh, in the general election. Thank you. How Senator Sanders, the, how the yeah, team, Danny. Senator Sanders, uh, after tonight, it seems that Donald Trump is gonna become the likely uh, GOP nominee. Will you commit now to saying whether or not you think he is a racist? Look, I don't have to label him. I think that he virtually every day has insulted one group of people or another, whether it is Mexicans and Latinos, whether it is Muslims, uh, whether it is women, whether it is veterans, whether it is African Americans. Let us never forget that before Trump became uh, a candidate for president, he was one of the leaders of the so-called Bertha Movement, a movement which tried to delegitimize the presidency of the first African-American president we have ever had. I'll let people put, the American people decide the appropriate label. Uh, but this is a man who does not have the demeanor, uh, does not have the policy background or the ideas to become president of the United States. I would love to run against him, and I'm absolutely confident that not only we would beat him, but we'd beat him by a pretty large number. How does the win in Indiana fundamentally change the race? Obviously, your delegate count is... is it's going to give us a great deal of momentum. 
because I think there are many in the media, like you and others, who have decided that the campaign is over. Well, I guess the people of Indiana did not quite agree with that assessment. Yeah. You know? And I think you may be surprised to find out that the folks, and I'm not predicting, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but the people in West Virginia may not agree with that assessment. And the people of Oregon may not agree with that assessment. And the people in our largest state, California, may not agree with that assessment. So we think, we understand, and I do not deny it for one second, that we have an uphill battle in front of us. Uh, but I think we have a path toward victory, although it is a narrow path. Our goal is twofold. Number one, to win a majority of pledged delegates. Uh, number two, it is to make sure that in those states where we have won landslide victories, you know, 65, 70 percent of the votes, that the superdelegates in those states listen to their constituents and vote the way their constituents voted in their state's primaries or caucuses. And thirdly, we are going to make the case to the superdelegates, many of them, by the way, came on board Hillary Clinton's campaign before I was even an announced candidate. They were there way back when. Well, the world has changed in the last year. And I believe that we will be able to make the case to many of those superdelegates that what is most important is not whether Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders is the nominee. What is most important is that we do not allow someone like a Donald Trump to become president of the United States. And I think that according to every poll that I have seen in the last month, Bernie Sanders defeats Donald Trump in the national polls by greater margins than does Hillary Clinton, and Bernie Sanders beats uh, Donald Trump by greater margins than Hillary Clinton in battleground state after battleground state after battleground state. In other words, I think the objective evidence is that I am the strongest candidate to prevent the Trump from becoming president. Senator, Senator have you, yes, you been personally, Senator, you said yourself this week that you would have to win 65% of the remaining delegates yes. to match Hillary Clinton and pledge right. delegates. It's not looking like Indiana is going to be that kind of landslide. It's what a start. It's a start. I'm looking forward to, there are other states to come. And we are looking forward to winning in West Virginia, uh, looking forward to winning in Kentucky, looking forward to winning in Oregon. And as you know, the state that has the most delegates is obviously California. And we already have a, a strong ground game in California. We have sent a lot of our people to California. Uh, we're going to run an unprecedented campaign in California. Uh, and with the help of the American people uh, who have helped us so much right now with those $27 contributions at berniesanders.com. You know, we have made history. We have 7.3 million campaign contributions, berniesanders.com. And with the help of the American people, we're going to have the resources we need to win in California. Senator, your fundraising dropped off pretty significantly. You know, I read people. an article in the New York Times. What was the word you used? Plunged? How do we compare to Hillary Clinton? She ended up with a few dollars more than we did. But for you, it dropped. For well, your you know, you know well, because we were record-breaking the issue is, I think we raised, somebody correct me if wrong, $26 million? $26 million in a month. That is a pretty good sum of money from where I come from. When we began this campaign, nobody ever dreamed probably we'd raise $26 million for the whole campaign, let alone in one month. Yes, so our numbers went down, and Hillary Clinton beat us by a few dollars. This is, we're taking on the most powerful political organization in America. She raised $600,000 more than I did. Didn't see the New York Times make that point. California. So we feel we feel pretty good, and we feel that today's victory will probably help us. But look, we have enough money. You know, we, everybody always wants more money. I don't have a super PAC. Secretary Clinton has a super PAC. But we have enough money to run a strong and winning campaign throughout. How do you Senator, plan to maximize those resources to take you through California? Because that's a very expensive. California state. is an outrageously expensive state in terms of media. You're right. And clearly, we're not going to be spending $100 million or whatever it takes on media in California. So we have to decide the best way to allocate our resources. I think that what the focus of our campaign will be actually what it has been up to now. And that is we're going to do a whole lot of rallies. You know, California has a lot of, a lot of large and, and, and great cities. And I think what we are going to end up doing, we have brought out in this campaign up to today over 1.1 million Americans to rallies that we have held. I don't know. I could be wrong on this. I don't know that anyone has brought out more. I may be wrong about that, but that's my impression. Senator We're going to go to California 
And when we go to California, you're going to see very large rallies up and down that beautiful state. Our last question, Lauren. Okay, uh, Senator, today uh, Donald Trump has been called the presumptive nominee. They've, they report they're ramping up for the general election. Any concern that by extending the Democratic primary that it's going to set Democrats at a disadvantage from July? Huh. Not at all. If you look at the polling out there, there was a poll that just came out yesterday today, and they asked the American people, uh, has the Democratic primary process invigorated the Democratic Party? Is it good for the Democratic Party? By very large numbers, the American people say yes. What we are doing in this campaign, and I'm extremely proud of it, we are literally bringing millions of people into the political process. And the way you bring people into the political process is you engage in a serious issue-oriented campaign. And people come out and they hear the points of view of Secretary Clinton, they hear my points of view, they get involved, and you know what? Those people then vote in the general election. So I have no doubt, zero doubt, that what we have done in this campaign, what we are doing now, and what we will do in the next six weeks is good for the Democratic Party, and it will result in a higher voter turnout. And let me conclude by saying this. Democrats and progressives win elections when the voter turnout is high. Republicans win elections when the voter turnout is low and when people are demoralized. I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that in November we have a very high voter turnout. Thank you all Thanks very everybody. much. Thanks, everybody.